I didn't know my grandmother very well. I have traced memories of visiting her house in Middletown, Ohio from before I was of school age. I saw her at large family gatherings over the years, but I never got the time to really talk to her. When I arrived at her house with my mom to help my aunts, uncles, and cousins move her out, she told me she wouldn't recognize me on the street. It is of importance to note that my grandmother, who my cousins and I called Nani Dot, had at this point entered the early stages of Alzheimer's. Yet this remark is characteristic of the frank honesty she employed throughout much of her life, an honesty that, at times, distanced her children. She never liked my mother. There was never a single incident that led to my father's distance, or at least none have ever been told, and my father is not the kind of person to hold grudges or even get very angry at all. I guess he eventually became exhausted from juggling his mother on one hand and his wife on the other, and chose the latter. I was a sophomore in high school when she died. Right around my 16th birthday, my parents and I drove to the hospice in Milwaukee, where she had been moved to be closer to my uncle. My normally guarded grandmother lay on the bed, hooked up to machines, growing paler by the minute. Most people I hear talk about seeing a loved one in hospice speak of the anger, sadness, frustration they feel when they see that person in such a vulnerable state. They mourn the loss of strength. For me, that was the one moment I felt I could begin to understand my grandmother. She was genuine. She was thankful. She waited until all five of her children arrived before she departed forever. The funeral was held in Middletown. Despite it being my first funeral, I don't remember much of the service, but I remember everything from that night. For the first time in a long time, all of my father's siblings and their children got together at Nani Dots and just had fun. We played board games and cards. We sang together as my cousin Nick played his guitar. My father, my father and his siblings reminisced about their childhood and my grandmother, the good and the bad. It was a lesson in humility and love. Despite what had happened over the years between my grandmother and each of her children, when the time came to celebrate her life and the family she had built, everyone came together and did it in the best way possible. Whatever qualms she had with people in that house that night, I know she would have loved to see us all there together. This is why I believe in the power of family.